If you guys have been using cryptocurrency exchanges for any meaningful amount of time, you're probably very aware of how often they crash. And when they crash, it's usually at the absolute worst moment when everyone is trying to use them at the same time. Back in 2021, I found a secret method that all major institutions and hedge funds are using that allows you to make trades and transfers on cryptocurrency exchanges even when the exchange is quote unquote down. So basically while everyone else is freaking out about their money and whether they're going to be able to make that trade or make a transfer off the exchange because the exchange is down, you'll be able to fully interact with the exchange as if the exchange was still up and running, giving you a massive advantage in these moments of volatility in trading and in transferring your assets so that you can have peace of mind about their safety. This week, I was finally given the opportunity to capture myself executing this strategy live on camera when my favorite exchange for buying and selling cryptocurrency, Gemini, went down. During this demo, you're going to see me withdraw all of my Bitcoin from the Gemini Gemini exchange and into my very safe cold storage self-custody multi-sig wallet over on Casa. All of this while Gemini.com was completely inaccessible. I've been trying to film a demo like this for the last year and a half, but the timing was really hard to work out and I was never able to catch it on camera. And so while the demo that I'm showing you today is on Gemini, this same exact strategy should work over on Coinbase or Kraken or any other exchange that we cover here on the channel. So without further ado, here's the demo. All right, guys, emergency press conference here. If you go to Gemini, Gemini.com, nothing shows up. So the website is down, the front end is down, but I think we're still going to be able to trade using the API. So let's see if we can go ahead and withdraw our funds that are stuck on Gemini off into our multi-sig. Go ahead and deploy the changes, and then we'll go ahead and test. Bad code there, let's go ahead and try it again. Bad code again here, coin to withdraw needs to be Bitcoin. Gonna go ahead and deploy one last time, and then hopefully this should work. So deploy and test. So we've got the currency available to withdraw there, and I have successfully requested a transfer for all of that Bitcoin to the address that I specified, and the withdrawal will be sent to the blockchain within the next 60 seconds. And again, if we click into Gemini.com here, it is not loading because I think Genesis went down or something, and now everyone's freaking out and trying to load Gemini.com, and so there's too many people. But if we go ahead and go to our Gmail and refresh here, hopefully <laughs> we will see that the Gemini Bitcoin withdrawal has been requested. And so again, Gemini.com totally down right now. You cannot get to Gemini.com, but our Bitcoin withdrawal is being processed. I will cut this video here and show you guys once I receive the Bitcoin and that's it. So again, another reason to set up an API access to all these exchanges, another reason to get you know started in learning how to program these things and using AWS. Uh, the Gemini website is totally down right now and I was just able to withdraw the Bitcoin that would have been stuck on Gemini.com, but is now safely in my cold storage multi-sig. All right, guys. So like I said earlier, I was going to show you when the Bitcoin arrived in my cold storage multi-sig. I'm going to just click here on the latest transaction, November 17th, 1223 PM. So hopefully I will have a timestamp somewhere on the screen, how long that took to process. But again, Gemini's front end user interface was completely down. All I did was run the script from AWS to confirm that withdrawal. I immediately got the email and then Gemini processed the withdraw here onto my phone, cold storage multi-sig by Casa. The amount is correct and it took less than 10 minutes for this Bitcoin to arrive you know, in deep cold storage where now if Gemini has some liquidity issue or some other like what's been going on this week with FTX. This Bitcoin is safe. I'm not ever going to lose this Bitcoin. Here at the end of the video, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit more context about why this API strategy works and in what situations this API strategy would not work. The strategy of using the API to place trades or make transfers works because 99% of the time when a cryptocurrency exchange quote unquote goes down, it's because the website or the app or whatever the front end user interface is of that cryptocurrency exchange has been requested too many times and the website can't handle all of that traffic. This typically happens when there are moments of extreme volatility in the crypto markets and everyone is desperately trying to buy or sell at the exact same time. But just because the front end of the cryptocurrency exchange goes down, it doesn't mean that the back end of the cryptocurrency exchange, the place that is actually executing the trades, it doesn't mean that that went down. And at the end of the day, all these front end user interfaces that you interact with on Gemini.com or coinbase.com 
all those front end user interfaces really are, are pretty buttons that help you interact with, in this case, Gemini's back end API. So when you click on all these fancy buttons on Gemini's front end on Gemini.com to let's say create a limit order, what Gemini is really doing in the back end is it's seeing all these inputs that you've created on Gemini.com and it's using these inputs to feed its back end API to actually execute your trades. And it's the same thing with transfers or any other functionality on the entire website. And so you can really think of the API as your personal direct channel to operate with these different cryptocurrency exchanges completely bypassing Gemini.com or Coinbase.com or Kraken.com and interact directly with the back end services that these companies provide. And so again, just because that front end is down, it doesn't mean that those back end infrastructure services that are actually executing your trades that these companies are hosting, it doesn't mean that those are down. Oftentimes, and every single time in my experience that the front end user interface of these websites has been down, the back end is still open and available for you to place trades or make transfers to your heart's content. Next, let's go ahead and talk about when this would not work. If you're watching this video when it's just come out, the FTX collapse is probably fresh in your minds. When FTX and FTX US went down, it wasn't because too many people logged into the site and crashed the front end. At this point, it seems like FTX went down because the business was fully insolvent and negligently gambling away customer funds. And so the API is not going to save you from FTX's seeming fraud and insolvent. Solvency. And that's because when FTX shut down the company, they presumably also shut down the API in the back end, which is something that institutions would have otherwise used to continue to place trades and make withdrawals from FTX. That being said, in the days up to FTX's complete collapse, you would have been able to use the API to withdraw funds from the platform, even on a weekly or a daily or an hourly basis with an automation from something like AWS. And those weekly or daily or hourly API withdrawal requests might have saved your your funds or allowed you to at least avoid any of the slowness that might have been caused in the run up to the collapse when everyone was using the website at the same time trying to process all of their withdrawals. This API strategy also would not work if the platform that we were using was doing some sort of regular backend maintenance and had turned off access to their APIs. But this would be a very rare occurrence and very unlikely to coincide with a huge market volatility event because for the most part, these companies are trying to schedule that maintenance during times when not many people are trading. Hopefully this video was helpful for you guys and it taught you something new about how these exchanges operate. If it was, definitely go down below and like the video and share this with any of your friends who have been frustrated and not been able to trade on one of these exchanges when they quote unquote go down. Comment down below if you guys have any questions. I do still respond to all the comments. And then check out these videos over here if you wanna implement one of these strategies for yourself on one of your favorite cryptocurrency exchanges. I highly recommend just going through the exercise for anyone who is serious about crypto because it is going to make your trading and withdrawing strategies that much more robust. I love you all. See you next week.